for today's video for a couple of reasons. The first one being I have my wonderful husband Dan here with me helping me out. So unless you have been living under a rock, then you already probably know that the series finale of Game of Thrones is exactly one week away. And we thought we would do something really special to commemorate the occasion. So we are going to be making an epic Game of Thrones inspired medieval feast. So we went through In at the Crossroads, which is a cool website with tons of Game of Thrones recipes from the books and show. And it turns out they also put out a cookbook called The Feast of Ice and Fire. And pretty awesome. We got it on our Kindle and we went through and looked through everything that would kind of, some of the more significant ones that stick out in the show and books and then also some recipes that kind of fit our menu. Um, so while we go through, I'll kind of give the backstory significance of the best recipes and Carol will show you and explain how it's made. Okay, so let's get started. Everything you did brought you where you are now, where you belong, to this video. Should we have some lemon cakes? Lemon cakes are my favorite. So we've been told. Lemon cakes. This Sansa favorite is referenced several times in the books and show. Now she may not be a little bird anymore, but she loves her lemon cakes. Now it's a very easy recipe to make, it just takes a couple of minutes. And it's a great companion while watching the show. Enjoy. So here is everything that you're gonna need for the lemon cakes. Two and a half cups of flour, two cups of sugar, six tablespoons of unsalted butter, the zest of two lemons, plus two tablespoons of lemon juice, two eggs, two egg yolks, two teaspoons of vanilla, a third a cup of confectioner's sugar, and one and a half teaspoons of milk. So I am starting here by zesting both of my lemons. Then before I do anything else, I'm gonna preheat my oven to 350 degrees. Then to your bowl, you're gonna to want to add in your sugar and your flour. Mix it up and then cut in your butter. I was so mad I couldn't find my pastry cutter anywhere, but my Pampered Chef Mix and Chop still worked pretty good. You're gonna to wanna to add that in until there are no big chunks of butter left. Now I'm adding in the rest of the ingredients. So that's the lemon zest, the vanilla, the lemon juice. And I ended up just adding in the whole two lemons that I juiced instead of just two tablespoons. And then also the whole eggs and the egg yolks. I'm mixing it really thoroughly. And you can add more flour if you need until the dough is no longer sticky. Mine, I ended up adding another half a cup of flour and it was still pretty sticky. So I had to use a cookie scoop in order to scoop it onto the baking sheet. You bake them for 15 minutes at 350 degrees until the tops are just slightly golden. Then allow them to cool for a minute before letting them completely cool on a cooling rack. The last step is to whip up a quick icing. So just mix together the confectioner's sugar with the milk and then drizzle it over the cookies. And there you have lemon cakes fit for Lady Sansa. If you find her, could you give her this? You should like the last one I gave her, but this one turned out better. The direwolf bread. Now, the direwolves are everything in Game of Thrones. Very significant. The sigil of House Stark. Uh, we see them a lot. They're mythical creatures. Now, in the show, Hot Pie bakes this not once, but twice for Arya. So, we're going to make the second rendition of this direwolf bread as it more resembles a direwolf. And we'll see how it comes out. Cheers. So everything you'll need to make your very own direwolf bread is four cups of all-purpose flour, a teaspoon of baking soda, four tablespoons of brown sugar, one and a half teaspoons of salt, one and three quarters cups buttermilk, a half a stick of cold butter, one egg, and a teaspoon of orange zest. So I've already preheated my oven to 350 degrees and then I grabbed a large mixing bowl and added in all the dry ingredients. So that's the flour, the baking soda, the brown sugar, and the salt. Now I'm just adding in my butter and working that in until the dough is dry and crumbly. 
Now in another bowl, I'm combining the buttermilk, the egg, and the orange zest. I added that to the flour mixture and mixed it all up. I really wish I had done this in my stand mixer, but I was trying to keep with the medieval vibe. I almost forgot that I had wanted to add in a little honey to sweeten it up, so I kneaded in about two tablespoons of that. Now take half the dough and you want to roll it out on a floured surface. Then using the direwolf stencil that I will link in the description box, you want to trace it onto the dough. Then using a very sharp knife, you want to cut it out. You want to make sure you add in all the little details like the spiky fur and the crisscross design. Then you want to brush the wolves very lightly with an egg wash. This is going to make them nice and golden brown. Then you'll bake them for 30 minutes at 350 degrees and they will turn nice and golden brown. Then you will have dire wolf bread that looks on par with Hot Pie's second version. served at weddings and vary in all different sizes. Of course, his had live pigeons in it. Whatever you do, keep an eye on your wine while you're enjoying this lovely feast. Okay, okay, so I know these are supposed to be pigeon pies and I live in New York and there is no shortage of pigeons here, but quarter shans are a heck of a lot easier to get at the grocery store and I feel like they still fit with the medieval theme. So to make it simple, I'm just throwing them in my crock pot and adding a little bit of seasoning. Then I'm putting the cover on and cooking it on low for six hours. So here is everything else that you'll need. And this is actually my personal chicken pot pie recipe that I have perfected over the years. A third a cup of sharp cheddar cheese that is shredded, your Cornish hens all shredded up, a half a pound of mushrooms that are chopped, three stalks of celery, three cloves of garlic, three shallots, a bunch of potatoes, three carrots, three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. You're gonna need a half a cup of wine, a cup of stock, some olive oil, tablespoon of uh, thyme, Dijon mustard, cup of peas, some heavy cream, and three tablespoons of butter. So you're going to want to start by preheating your largest pan on medium-high heat. Add your olive oil and your butter, and when it foams, you can add in your mushrooms. After the mushrooms have cooked for 7 to 8 minutes, add in the rest of your vegetables and season that with salt and pepper. Cook it, stirring occasionally for about 5 minutes. Then you want to sprinkle the flour over your pan and stir it for about a minute. Now you can add in your half a cup of wine and let that reduce by half. And feel free to pour yourself a glass while you're at it. Just make sure that it's not the same type of wine that Joffrey had when he ate his last piece of pigeon pie. You can now add your stock and let that simmer to thicken for about five minutes. Then you're gonna add in everything that makes this extra delicious and that is Dijon mustard, thyme, heavy cream or half and half, and sharp white cheddar cheese. Then just add in your peas and your chicken and mix everything together. Then just transfer the whole mixture to your pie dish. You're gonna top this with a store-bought pie crust, which I'm sorry, I forgot to mention when I was giving you the ingredients before. My pie crust came in a pack of two, so I used the extra pie crust to cut out some leaf shapes to make it look more authentic to the one shown in the show. I also used my pie bird in the center to replace the large pastry pigeon that was in the original one. 
Then I brushed the entire thing with an egg wash and popped it in the 375 degree oven for 45 minutes. And here is the finished pigeon pie fit for an evil king. Mmm, this is good. You think so? Arya's snitched tart. Now, this isn't a big item. It's referenced quick in the books. Back when Arya's at Harren Hall. Anyway, it sounds tasty, and Arya's pretty awesome, so we're gonna make it. We're doing the modern version, and we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it comes out a little better than some of those pies she's been making. All right, we are halfway done, guys, so let's get started with Aria's tarts. Everything you'll need are a package of frozen puff pastry sheets and let those thaw out. You need a beaten egg, six ounces of goat cheese, a tablespoon of lemon juice, some kosher salt, three peeled apples, three tablespoons of butter. I forgot to put that in here, but you do need it and make sure it's melted. A quarter cup of honey, plus a little bit of allspice and chopped nuts, which those last two are optional. So you wanna start by rolling your puff pastry up nice and thin. Then you wanna find two round objects to trace, one large and one smaller. I'm using two different size mason jar lids, but drinking glasses would also work good. You're gonna trace as many large circles as you can. Then take half of those and trace the small circle in the middle. This is gonna make a ring. Now brush the edges of the circles with an egg wash and place the rings on top to make a little crust. Now stick your puff pastry rings in the freezer for 30 minutes. In the meantime, you can mix together your goat cheese, lemon juice, and salt until it's well combined. Then you just want to spread the cheese mixture in the center of the puff pastry. Top it with the apples. Add the honey to the melted butter and brush that over the tops. Then you can sprinkle it with allspice and chopped nuts if you want. These bake at 375 degrees for 30 minutes. Alright, a feast of ice and fire. Let's start with some buttered carrots. Let's see what we got. Alright, King's Landing dish. Uh, I'm sure carrots are eaten everywhere, but this one references Cersei. Laying out a feast, probably before she kills someone. Alright, two cups chopped carrots. Use heirloom carrots. I'm not sure what heirlooms are, so I'll go with these regular carrots. Once you've figured out your carrot situation, you want to chop up two cups of them. You want to add the carrots to a pot of water and bring it to a boil. Once it's boiling, drain them immediately, then place them in a baking dish. Now you're going to add a half a cup of raisins and two to three tablespoons of honey, two tablespoons of wine vinegar, and two teaspoons of cumin. Then add some fresh ground pepper and about two tablespoons of melted butter. Let those roast in a 400 degree oven until they're tender. I think I did mine for about 20 minutes. When they're all done cooking, just add a big splash of wine to deglaze the pan and transfer everything into a serving dish. All right, next up is the summer green salad straight out of King's Landing. You're gonna start by taking a bulb of fennel and cutting it in half. You're gonna trim off the little fronds at the end and reserve those for later. You can discard the stalk. Then you are going to slice the fennel bulb into thin slices. Next, I'm gonna cut a cup of seedless grapes in half and then I'm gonna dice up a shallot. Next, I'm going to chop up about a half a cup of nuts. The recipe called for candied pecans, but I happen to have some walnuts and they tasted great. Now I'm going to whisk up a little vinaigrette to use as the dressing. To a bowl, I'm adding four teaspoons of apricot jam, three tablespoons of white wine vinegar, three tablespoons of olive oil, and the diced shallot. 
You want to add the fennel slices to the vinaigrette and let them marinate for at least 15 minutes. Now all that's left is to toss it together. So in a bowl, I'm adding the grapes, the fennel fronds, and about five ounces of arugula. I topped it with three quarters cup of gorgonzola and added in the fennel vinaigrette. I tossed it up really well before topping it with the chopped nuts. The salad was so light and perfect for summer, but there is so much intense flavor. It was absolutely delicious. Run to the litter. That one's yours, Snow. Honey chicken recipe. Nothing special, but in the books it's referenced when John feeds some under the table to Ghost. Now we love Ghost, we love John, and we love chicken, so we're gonna go for it. We are in the home stretch and onto the main dishes. For this honey chicken, you are gonna take a whole chicken and start by patting it dry. You can start by preheating your oven to 450 degrees, then cover the chicken with melted butter and sprinkle it with salt. This is gonna make it so crispy on the outside. You are gonna roast this bird for about an hour or until it's cooked through and the breast meat is no longer pink. When your chicken is halfway done cooking, you can start to make your sauce. All the ingredients are a cup of apple cider vinegar, three quarters cup of honey, a teaspoon or two of mint, a half a cup of raisins and dried cherries, and a tablespoon of unsalted butter. All you need to do is combine all the sauce ingredients in a saucepan and let it simmer until it reduces by half. This takes about 30 minutes. When the chicken is done cooking, spread about half of the sauce over the chicken and reserve the other half to use as gravy. I am the sword in the darkness. I am the watcher on the walls. I am the shield that guards from the realm of men. Rack of lamb or lamb chops. Now this is a meal of the north or at the wall, typically for commanders and lords. But when Jon Snow and his brothers were sworn into the night's watch, they were treated to this wonderful meal for the watch. I saved the best dish for last. We're going to be making delicious, flavorful lamb chops. You can start by preheating your oven to 475 and seasoning your lamb with salt and pepper. Now in a bowl, you want to add in a cup of fresh breadcrumbs, two cloves of minced garlic, half a teaspoon of dried thyme, and half a teaspoon of dried parsley. Mix it together and add just enough olive oil to hold it together, then set it aside. Now in a dry skillet over high heat, you wanna sear the lamb on all sides to give it a nice brown crust. While the meat is searing, combine a quarter cup of red wine vinegar with a tablespoon of flour. Mix this up and then paint it onto the lamb before you apply the herbed breadcrumbs. Pat the breadcrumbs onto the lamb to form a little crust to cover the meat. Roast these at 475 degrees for about 25 minutes. 145 degrees internal temperature will give you a perfect medium rare. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching and I hope that you enjoyed seeing this Game of Thrones inspired medieval feast. I hope you'll give some of these recipes a try while you watch one of the last few episodes of Game of Thrones. I will see you guys on Thursday with another video. Thanks again for watching. Bye!